हेलो एवरीबडी तो आज हम पढ़ेंगे आर एन इंटरफेरेंस के बारे में सो वॉट इज़ आर एन इंटरफेरेंस लेट्स सी सो आर एन इंटरफेरेंस इट इज ए टाइप ऑफ जीन रेगुलेशन इट इज़ ए टाइप ऑफ जीन रेगुलेशन ओके एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट जीन रेगुलेशन देर आर डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ जीन रेगुलेशन राइट योर ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल लेवल ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल लेवल योर प्रोसेसिंग लेवल योर योर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन लेवल एंड योर ट्रांसलेशन लेवल सो देर आर डिफरेंट देर आर डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ दिस जीन रेगुलेशन and the rna interference it is a gene regulation at which level it is a translational it is a translational level of gene regulation okay so here we will study about the rna interference okay and talking about the uh, you know the transcriptional gene regulation they will learn lac operon okay we will learn about the lac operon in uh, future videos but for now we will see about the rna interference so as i told you all that rna interference is a translational level of gene regulation so in order to understand this topic in a very good way first we have to understand what is this translation okay so uh, we all know about dna right we all know about dna and how dna is transformed into uh, different types of rnas and that rna will uh, finally you know like converted into a protein right so this step is known as this is your central dogma central dogma central dogma the dna is converted into rna via process called transcription and this rna is converted into the information that is stored in this rna is converted into protein by the process of uh, by the process called translation so whenever we interfere this step this particular step okay translational step then uh, then it will not result in the formation of proteins right so in this rna interference what we do is like we interfere this particular process this particular step translational step by rna okay by rna double stranded rna by double stranded rna that is why this process is known by name rna rna inter rna interference as because you know the step this step translational step is being interfered by what rna double stranded rna so that the protein which is supposed to be made out of this mrna will not going to form now okay so that is why this particular uh, you know the process has given this name rna interference so let's see how this rna interference is helpful in uh, today's modern science so we have this uh, tobacco plan okay tobacco plan and uh, in this tobacco plan there is this disease called to uh, sorry root knot disease okay root knot disease this disease is caused by this this particular this particular uh, pathogen okay this parasite named uh, melidogyne incognitia okay it is a nematode it is a round worm so it is a parasite so it attacks this parasite attacks the root of this tobacco plant and you know there it like you know it forms this knot okay this uh, small knots over the roots which makes it difficult for uh, uh, you know the roots to absorb uh, enough amount of water and the nutrients thus because of this the productivity increase uh, sorry decreases okay so this 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 uh, this disease root knot disease leads to the uh, reduction in the productivity of this particular plant so so in this case the modern science uh, applies the principle of rna interference in order to solve this problem let's see how so uh, you know for that we need firstly we have to identify a gene any gene which is very very uh, essential or which is very very vital for this melido melidogyne incognition in order to survive in the uh, you know host plant okay so uh, one such example is that this gene mink 16803 this is a gene which suppresses the immune response which suppresses the immune response of this particular plant so that this melanogyne incognitia could survive uh, inside this host plant okay so you know our first step is to identify this gene and our second step is to introduce this gene into a into a 
host okay that is our plan because we want to make a pest resistant uh, this melanogyne incognitia resistant tobacco plant right so so for that uh, you know we have to transfer this gene this particular gene to the plant okay by a technique called uh, recombinant biotechnology right recombinant biotechnology we know that so for that we need vector obviously so in this case we use agarobacterium agarobacterium okay agarobacterium and uh, you know this agarobacterium has a special uh, plasmid called t plasmid t plasmid first we have to disarm this uh, you know this disarm this this pathogen because you know because the t plasmid of this bacteria can cause uh, tumor to a plant so first before using this uh, this agrobacterium as a vector we have to disarm this like for example let's suppose this is a gene which is responsible for bringing the uh, tumor to this plant so first of all we have to take out this this, this harmful gene and in place of this we have to insert our gene of interest our gene of interest okay our gene gene of interest our gene of interest in this case our gene of interest is this mink 16803 okay so after the introduction of this uh, this particular gene now inside this plant cell this gene will form double stranded rna double stranded double stranded uh, okay double stranded double stranded rna double stranded rna so now in future whenever this uh, melanogyne incognitia this parasite comes and eats this plant this transgenic plant then this uh, then it will ingest this ds rna also double stranded rna also now as soon as this uh, this nematode ingest this double stranded dna sorry double stranded rna now this double stranded rna now this double stranded rna will be converted into small fragments of uh, you know double stranded rna only this is quite long and this is quite short so this is known as small small interfering small interfering rna the full form of this uh, the full form of sirna is small interfering rna and this uh, conversion is done by a enzyme called dicer dicer is actually an endonuclease okay now, as soon as this uh, siRNA formed, now it will unwind and forms two single-stranded, two single-stranded RNA. That is your passenger RNA. That is your passenger RNA, passenger RNA, and the other one is your guide RNA. Okay, this passenger RNA will degrade. It undergoes into a degradation, degradation. But this guide RNA will. Uh, will will form a complex with risk okay risk r i s e risk risk is a complex of many proteins uh, which can like you know uh, which can uh, silence a particular mrna so that is why like this risk the full form of this risk is rna induced silencing complex so yes after this guide rna you know forms a complex with this risk then it will go and it will search for its complementary okay complementary this all is happening inside the nematode okay and in this case, the complementarity of this RNA, guide RNA, will be in the mRNA of what? Mink, mink uh, 16803. This is a gene, right? This, is, this was our target gene because that's because we have introduced this gene to the uh, plant cell. And then inside the plant cell, it was converted into double standard RNA. And this double standard RNA is actually the RNA of this only, okay? So after uh, you, this risk-bound guide RNA found its complementarity on the sequence of this mRNA, the mRNA of this uh, MINK16803 uh, gene, right? Now it will bind and after binding, what happens is like you know uh, in risk only there there is this another protein called argo argonaut okay now this argonaut will cleave this particular mrna particular mrna and now we have two pieces of this single mrna thus 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 now what happens thus this gene this particular gene is now silenced right now this particular gene is now silenced so this is how rna interference works okay this is all happening inside the uh, nematode and since and since this particular gene is not being able to express in the nematode now now this nematode will no longer be able to survive inside the transgenic host okay inside this uh, 
pest resistant host plant so yes this is how it works uh, agrobacterium is a genetic uh, agrobacterium is a nature agrobacterium is a nature's genetic engineer okay so agrobacterium is commonly used as vector yes we know that right and it causes what it causes normally it causes what crown gall disease what is this crown gall disease this is a tumor okay this is a type of a tumor tumor this no uh, this agrobacterium normally causes tumor to the plant cell especially the dicot why dicot because dicot has special uh, you know types of chemicals like alkaloids okay naturally this uh, naturally this agrobacterium to me efficient is uh, very effective in case of dicot but nowadays scientists they can you know do the same thing with the monocot as well okay so yes so yeah these are the steps so first step is to identify a gene uh, in a nematode of course right uh, which is crucial for its survival okay which is crucial for survival like your uh, you know, this thing um, mink one uh, mink 16803 this is a gene by the way look so the problem the protein encoded by this gene is secreted is secreted into the host plant and suppresses what immune response and facilitates uh, the parasitism okay so it normally what suppresses the plant's immunity okay so that the parasite could grow uh, efficiently so the next point is your uh, you know dna or we can say the gene is inserted into a vector such as agrobacterium plasmid yes and in fact a plant cell okay once inside plant cell the inserted dna sequence is transcribed into dsrn that is double stranded rna due to its hair hairpin structure so now we have to understand one thing like we all know that that transcription occurs in only one strand of dna right that is why we have single stranded rna but in the case of this particular uh, experiment we have to put that we have to insert that uh, gene in such a way so that you know it could express both the strand i mean it should have what hairpin structure then only it uh, then only your uh, gene will able to make what double stranded rna okay uh, then the infected cell can be cultured in the control environment to form a callus which can then be induced to form a whole new plant this is possible because plants will have what roti potency this is very very important roti potency the ability to generate whole whole plant from a single cell uh, when the nematode feeds on a genetically modified tobacco plant it will ingest ds rna present inside the plant cell once inside the nematode the double stranded rna is cleaved by dicer into what si rna small interfering rna now this small interfering rna on ones into a two single stranded uh, rna the one is your passenger rna and the other one is your guide rna okay the passenger rna is degraded out of which the passenger rna will degrade while the guide rna associate with the argonate okay this is another uh, this is another uh, nucleases okay this is another the, your uh, ribonucleases and forms and forms risk okay and forms risk so and lastly this risk drives the silencing of that target mrna and in our case the target uh, the target mrna is the mrna mrna of mrna of this gene this particular gene right as we have selected this gene as a target gene from a nematode so i hope you have understood this topic uh, as this topic was quite confusing uh, but still if you guys have any doubt regarding this video or the regarding this uh, lecture you can always uh, comment down below i will surely gonna help you with that so thank you very much hope to see you in the next video too